Hello and welcome to the Ristorante Neanderthal, a unique culinary experience where we provide fresh and authentic Neanderthal food ethically sourced from across their wide geographic expanse. I'm Pete and I will be your waiter today, guiding you through our menu and telling you about the science behind the Neanderthal diet. I'll begin by directing you towards our hors d'oeuvres. First on the list, as you can see here, are our freshly picked dates. We know that Neanderthals ate dates because of a particular individual from Shanidar. Shanidar is a famous Neanderthal site situated in the Zagros Mountains of Iraq, and it's really important because we found a number of different Neanderthal skeletons there. One of them, Shanidar III, now resides in the United States and is stored at the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History, where I visited it last year. Now, Shanidar III is really cool because scientists were able to actually look at the teeth to figure out some information about this individual's diet. You see, on our teeth we have this substance called plaque, which builds up over time. And as the plaque builds up, it basically hardens. And when it hardens, it entraps some of the little pieces of food particles that are washing around in our mouth. And thus, calculus can actually preserve evidence of what we've been eating. So scientists were able to take this dental calculus off of this individual's tooth and then look through it for remnants of the food that this Neanderthal had been eating. And what they found was really cool. They found all of these little phytoliths, which are these little silica, so basically little glass pieces that are created within a plant as it grows. And they're pretty specific, so you can kind of tell the general types of plants based off of what types of phytoliths they make. So by looking at this, they were able to tell that this Neanderthal had been eating a date plant and also some other type of fruit trees, but they weren't able to identify exactly what types. Next up on the menu are assorted Mediterranean mussels, definitely something I would recommend. Now, we have evidence that Neanderthals were consuming mussels from Vanguard Cave in Gibraltar. At this site, there are layers of ash left behind by Neanderthal harves, and in these layers are these mussels. Also spread throughout the layers are all sorts of napping debris, basically made when Neanderthals were making stone tools, and then we also have some Mousterian tools there, once again typical of Neanderthal populations. So what appears to have been happening here is that Neanderthals were collecting these mussels and then probably using fire in some way to be able to basically kill the organism inside and split the shell open and possibly even using the stone tools they were making at the site to also cut into them and harvest this delicious mollusk meat. In case you're looking for a more vegetarian hors d'oeuvre, we also have freshly chopped water lily tubers. Evidence of these once again comes from the dental calculus of a Neanderthal individual, but this time from Spy Cave in Belgium. There, they were able to once again sample that dental calculus and this time find starch grains, which also happen to be fairly specific between different types of plants. And so, these appear to have come from these underground storage organs, where water lilies beneath the ground, they basically grow this tuber, where they're storing all sorts of important biomolecules to basically feed the plant. And those were apparently utilized by Neanderthals for consumption. Our final hors d'oeuvre is our succulent Portuguese crab, and it is sourced from the Grotta de Figueria Brava near Lisbon, Portugal. And this site has been known for a while, but this paper was actually published very recently, just in 2023 in fact. And scientists in this paper were looking at some of the faunal remains from this site, and they had been excavated about between 2010 and 2013. They found about 809 crab remains, so pieces of different crabs, and about 8% of these were burnt. They also noticed that there seemed to be a size selection. Most of the remains came from larger crab individuals, which may indicate that Neanderthals were going out and actively looking for large crabs to eat. In addition to their burnt nature, there were scars basically on the crab shell where it appears that they were tearing off the claws. And so overall, this is a really interesting new piece of evidence which ties together our understanding that Neanderthals were also exploiting seafood. 
Transitioning over to our main dishes, our first item here on the menu is our grilled rabbit leg served with fresh Belgian mushrooms. We have evidence of Neanderthal consumption of rabbit from Bolomore Cave in Spain, where they appear to have been butchered. Now, Bolomore Cave isn't particularly famous for Neanderthal fossils, but the time period in which this is situated seems to suggest that it was probably Neanderthals here at the site at the time. Evidence that Neanderthals consumed mushrooms comes once again from Spy Cave in Belgium. Here, they were sampling the dental calculus, not for phytoliths, but for DNA, and they were able to find basically these sections of DNA that mapped pretty well to the genome of the gray shag mushroom, which indicates that Neanderthals were harvesting mushrooms and eating them as well. One of our chef's favorite dishes on the menu is our ibex mutton, as you can see here. We have evidence that Neanderthals were eating ibex from a site called El Esqualu Cave in Spain. Now, ibexes are these wild goats, and the Iberian ibex specifically lives in this portion of Spain called Iberia, which is a very mountainous region. And Neanderthals appear to have been eating them, because at this cave we have evidence that they were defleshing and butchering ibexes. Our next item on the menu is our roasted monk seal with pine nuts. I can't say I recommend it. I've heard it's a little chewy. However, we have evidence of this from Vanguard Cave in Gibraltar where we found a skeleton of a butchered monk seal. Scientists found something which is really fascinating. They found that Neanderthals were actually cutting basically the humerus off of the scapula here, which they noted is something that we see in Inuits who were eating seals very recently, that they would also butcher them by cutting off their flippers right at the scapular joint. Next up is one of our most popular dishes, rack of woolly rhinoceros ribs. And we have a number of different places where we know Neanderthals were consuming woolly rhinoceros. One of these is from Spy Cave in Belgium once again. Here, when they were sequencing the dental calculus, they also found genetic markers that mapped to that of the woolly rhinoceros, whose DNA we've sequenced from other locations. Further evidence comes from Erd, a site in Hungary where they found butchered woolly rhinoceros skeletons. And when they looked at the bones, they could see those specific cut marks that Neanderthals had made when they were taking off the flesh. Finally on our menu is our straight tusked elephant steak, another favorite. There was a recent 2023 publication on this, which revealed that Neanderthals were butchering straight tusked elephants at Newmark Nord in Germany. Quite a long time ago, scientists had discovered a wooden spear at this site, and they also discovered a lot of large animal bones, such as these straight tusked elephant bones. All over the skeletons, they were finding these cut marks. For example, they found cut marks on the sides of the jaw, indicating that they were removing the mandible. They found cut marks in the back of the throat, basically, where Neanderthals had cut out the tongue, and also along the back of the vertebrae, where they were basically removing the back strap muscles, which are also very good to eat. I hope you've seen just how varied the Neanderthal diet is. Now, obviously, many Neanderthals might not have eaten some of these more location-specific dietary items. However, it shows that when Neanderthals were migrating throughout Asia and Europe and the Middle East, they were encountering new environments where there were new food sources, and Neanderthals were readily adapting to these new food sources to eat large game, but also plants and also aquatic mammals and other aquatic life. And so I think this shows just how versatile and really human Neanderthals were in terms of their diet. Thank you all for watching. If you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe.